And uh, to Pastor uh, Jenkins, uh, the church continues to pray for your, your recovery. Um, just keep the faith, my brother, and that God will heal you quickly so that you can return uh, to his people. So Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 20. If you have found it, please say amen. Amen. And I want you to just stick close to me here because we're going to uh, dive and dwell in the scripture. Amen. Amen. The topic that I bring to you today is be careful, don't block your blessing. Be careful, don't block your blessing. If you could just stand with me as we pray, just ask the Holy Spirit to lead in this moment. Most compassionate Father, this is your moment, not mine. So, Father, right now I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. And, Father God, I ask that you look on me right now. Forgive me of any sins that I've committed, Father God. Cleanse me as I speak to your people that the word may be received and be applicable to their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 5, and we will go through verse 7. The Bible reads, I'm reading from the New King James Version. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, and a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. Church of God, King Herod was appointed by the Roman Empire to rule Judea. These events happened at a specific time. This uh, was the man known as Herod the Great, who was at the end of a long and terrible reign. Herod the Great was a descendant of Jacob's brother Esau. Therefore, he was an Edomite or an Edomine. He was known to be cruel and responsible for the ex execution of many people, including his own family members. Herod the Great was, had a reputation of if you cross him, you will die. This Hebrew name, though, Zacharias, it means uh, Zechariah, and it means God remembers. And I want you to stick a pin, take a note there, God remembers. The Bible says Zacharias and Elizabeth are blameless. And blameless would mean that uh, someone is perfect. But we know the only perfect man that walked this earth was Jesus Christ. This doesn't mean that uh, they were sinless. This means that they lived by faith. They were righteous and obedient, and they honored God in everything that they do. Uh, you, so they had a rep reputation of being faithful to God. You know that someone can look at you, and just by your character, it, they, it, it is hard for them to tell, um, to, to see the faults that you have. Just by the way that you bring yourself. So they were blameless. So Zacharias was a priest married to the daughter of a priest. This was seen as the perfect couple. But there was one problem. One problem. Elizabeth was barren. They had no children. The couple was stigmatized because of this. Because of Elizabeth's barrenness, the, 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 the people thought it must be something that they did wrong. Why God has not blessed them with children. It must be something uh, that, that they have not been honoring God with. Why God has not blessed them. It almost seems that every time when you, when, when you are not getting the blessing or your life does not look favorable, people would say, God, you're not a true Christian. 
How can you be a true Christian, Sister Lani, and your car is blown up? How can you be a, a, a true Christian and, 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 and you don't have children? God's favor is not on you. God must be displeased with, with, with Elizabeth and Zacharias because they don't have children. Maybe they are pretending to be holy. You see, childlessness in the Bible was considered by Jews to be divine, a divine punishment and grounds for divorce. In Leviticus 20, verse 20, if a man lies, lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. He has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. Uh, so this tells us, Church of God, that that Elizabeth and, and Zacharias, it was assumed they did something wrong. But this was not strange in Bible Church of God. This was not strange. Great men wives were barren. If we look at Genesis 11 and 30, but Sarai, Sarah was barren, she had no child. In Genesis 25 and 21, no, Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. This was not strange in Bible where great men wives were childless. In verses 8, and I want you to follow me closely, it's verses 8, we're going from 8 to 10. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. At this time... Brothers and sisters, uh, as time went by, the number of priests multiplied. There were said to be about 20,000 priests, priests in the time of Jesus. Each division of priests served for one week twice a year. A priest was chosen by casting lots to determine who would do the sacred function of burning incense morning and evening, which was about 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And if you look at Exodus 30 to 7, 7 to, to 8, you will see that. You see, this opportunity uh, to serve came only once in a lifetime. According to Jewish traditions, the priests would gather in a semicircle and pick a number. For example, the number 33, and the leader would start counting until they reach 33, and whoever 33 fell on would be the person selected. There were several lots cast. The first lot would, who should cleanse the altar and prepare its fire. The second lot, who would kill the morning sacrifice and sprinkle the altar, the golden candlestick, and the altar of incense. The third one, who would offer the incense, and this is the most critical lot. The fourth, who was to burn the pieces of the sacrifice on the altar and perform the concluding part of the service. You see, friends of God, those who received the first and second lots would repeat their duty at the evening sacrifice, but not with the third lot. The, lot, the third lot fell on Zacharias to offer incense. And this most likely was the biggest event of his life. Incense was offered to God on the golden altar every morning and every evening. These were hours where the people would pray, whether outside the temple home, whether outside the temple or in their home or even in other foreign lands. At this moment, people were praying. As the incense ascend from the golden altar, so did the prayers of God's people. Whereas do we see that in Bible? We see that in Revelations, uh, verse 8 and 3. It says, Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints 
upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Friends of God, your prayers are before the throne. Angels are taking our prayers to God. Our prayers are not going unheard. Amen? If you follow me in verses 11 through 17, the Bible reads, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. And he will turn to many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. My friends, whenever human beings encounter celestial beings, the first thing that the celestial being would caution the human is to say, do not be afraid. We see that also in uh, Luke verses uh, 8, Luke chapter 2. Verses 8 to 10. And uh, the Bible reads, Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you Good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. So we see where celestial being is cautioning us. Do not fear. You see, this was the same angel who appeared to Daniel more than 500 years ago to tell him about the time of the Messiah's coming. As Zacharias was offering the incense and praying, you, you might ask yourself the question, what was Zacharias praying for? He must have been praying for the nation of Israel since they were under bondage by the Romans. He must have been praying for God to send uh, the Savior. But one thing was certain that throughout his life, Zacharias was praying for a son. Because remember, his wife Elizabeth was barren. For years, Zacharias must have been disappointed saying, I have done all that you asked me, God. I have been walking in your ways. I have kept the faith. And here am I, an old man, and you are telling me I will have a son. I don't know what you are talking about, Gabriel. I gave up on that prayer a long time ago. I am praying now for the salvation of Israel. I stop praying for a son because my wife is too old. She is no, but we, we know that she is barren. I'm praying that God will send the promised Messiah. I am not worried about praying for a son anymore. I gave up a long time ago. But church of God, God is still listening to her silent cries. The prayers you prayed for a long time ago that you forgot, that you yourself forgot about, God will answer in his own time. Remember I said what the name Zacharias means. God remembers. I know you have been praying for that thing so long ago, but I am here to tell you don't give up. Maybe you don't have the job or the position in your life that you desire to be, but I'm here to tell you, don't stop praying because God is still listening. God remembers. 
Maybe you didn't get uh, that spouse that you have been longing for, but don't stop praying. Maybe someone close to you hurt you and you find it hard in your heart to forgive them and it seems like you can't get over it, but don't stop praying. Or maybe, just maybe, it is your child or your children. You expect them to be in college. You expect them to be in church. You expect them to have a certain status in society. But don't stop praying. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And if in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus, for who? For you. Zacharias and Elizabeth had forgotten and gave up hope. But uh, the name Zacharias means God remembers. When we pray and things are not happening instantaneously, we must remember that God lives outside of time. God, it does not have a clock or calendar. He doesn't walk with a watch on his hand. He lives outside of time. Your time and God's time are different times. The Bible says a thousand years is just a day to God. In 2 Peter 3, 8, it says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. Zacharias, Church of God, didn't know that God would answer both prayers at once. I call it double for the trouble. He didn't know that God would give him a son and this son would play a significant role in God's plan of redemption. This son, John, was not no ordinary child. This was John the Baptist. This was John the Baptist who baptized many, bringing them back to, the, to their children. And, and you see where it says, he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared, prepared for the Lord. God remembers. In verses 18, and Zacharias said to the angel, how shall I know this? <laughs> For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. In other words, Zacharias is saying this is impossible. Gabriel, what are you talking about? You see, Zacharias made a big mistake. Be careful, Zacharias. Don't block your blessing. Remember, my friends, we just read in verse 13 where Gabriel told him he will have a son. Let's look at verse 13. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, afraid Zacharias, for your prayer is heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. Gabriel told him he will have a son. But this is what Zacharias did. You see, Zacharias began to compartmentalize God. He look at the situation first and then look at what God can do last. You see, my church of God, but my God is a God of the impossible. And I know because of our mind limitations, we can't imagine the things of God. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. It was also in Genesis 18, verses 11 to 12. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. And therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? You see, we see where we place limitations on the Almighty God. 
Zacharias was thinking this was too big for God. God can't deliver, but my God likes to do big things behind the scenes. Can I tell you that when Amazon can't deliver and UPS can't deliver and FedEx can't deliver and DHL can't deliver, my God will always deliver. In verse 19, and the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. <laughs> Hold on, Zacharias. You are an old man. Gabriel is saying, but I am Gabriel. It seems you don't understand who I am. So let me tell you who I am. I stand in the presence of God. I live where God lives. Where streets are aligned with gold. Where celestial beings live forever. Where thousands and thousands of angels worship God night and day without ceasing. Singing holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, I am Gabriel. I was there when your prayers were answered long before you were even born. And I was sent to tell you these good things that the Almighty God told me to tell you. I was sent to deliver your blessing. Be careful, Zacharias. Don't block your blessing. In verse 20. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place. Because, Zacharias, you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. Church of God, Zacharias paid a high price for doubting God. Because of Zacharias, this belief, he was made dumb. Because God didn't want him to spread doubt and disbelief among the people. He was made dumb, could not speak. And not only uh, was Zacharias unable to speak, but he was unable to hear. In Luke 1, verse 15 to 62, so it was on the eighth day that they came to, this, to circumcise the child. And they would have called him by his name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, There was one, there is no one among you, among your relatives, who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would have had him called. He could not hear. Dumb, can't speak, can't hear because you doubted God's word. Even though Zacharias was unable to speak and unable to hear, I believe that God kept his eyes open for, your, for a reason. I believe God kept his eyes open so he could see the full glory of God. So he could see his old barren wife have a child to become pregnant. So he could see his old wife go through the first and second and third trimester being strong, still cooking and still washing, still taking care of the house. So he could see his old wife producing several ounces of milk. So he could see the birth of his special son, the one crying in the wilderness. So he could see that God's promises are faithful and true. My friends, don't you know the words that come out of your mouth can put you in trouble? Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Be careful, don't block your blessing. Watch the words that come out of your mouth. Don't go on the job interview talking about uh, and calling your friend talking about, I don't think I'm qualified. God has already qualified you. Don't speak down to your children and expect 
them to hold their heads high in society. You need to speak life over your child. You need to speak life over your husband. Speak life over your wife. Speak life over your relatives. Speak life over your friends. And speak life over your church brothers and your church sisters. Even though Zacharias did not believe, God is still merciful. God did not take away his blessing because God's promises are true and faithful. In Deuteronomy 7 verse 9, Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. You see, the nature of God, church of God, God does not change his promises. His promises are faithful and true. If he said he's, he will bless you, he will bless you. It is not in his nature to take it back. You know, some of us, we get promised by people. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. And they don't show up. They don't come through. And you feel disappointed. Uh, but the Bible said you should not trust in man. Trust in God. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. And I hear the songwriter says, Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. God is true and faithful. Be careful. Don't block your blessing. And I'll leave you with this in Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to who? You don't have to tell your friend. You don't have to tell your spouse. You don't have to tell anyone. Make your request be made known to God. And the Bible says, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. We guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And as we just read Church of God, we see where Zacharias doubted God. Doubted his words. Not trusting that a God who is a God of the impossible can make his old wife become pregnant. So my prayer is that you allow God to move in your life. Don't put any limitations on God. Don't put up any barrier of, uh, on God. Because I serve a God who is a barrier mover. Those barriers you put up, he can break down easily. And I'm just going to call Elder Wade Sr. just to pray for the church. Pray that for the young people. Pray that God will move in this greater Atlanta church. Pray that the church will impact the community, those who are in and around it. Pray that the gospel will go forth so that is coming soon can be much quicker than we can imagine. Elder Wade Cena, if you could just come and pray for this greater Atlanta church. Shall we pray, everyone? I'm inviting you, if possible, to kneel where you are as we lift up the name of Prince Emmanuel. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor on this holy Sabbath day. Heavenly Father, as we come and send up our praises to you, I know the blessing will come down. Lord, we are in your courts today. And what better place we can find ourselves than to be in your sanctuary. The psalmist David say, I was glad when they say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Today, Lord, we see empty seats. But I know that you have a plan for this church. 
I know, Heavenly Father, that we look at the outward part, but God looks at the heart. So you know that you have your people out there, Lord, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, they will come. You have said in your words, other sheep I have, which is not of this fold, but they too will come. We pray, Lord, that you will send the Holy Spirit to walk up and down in this community, to go house by house, door by door, lane by lane, and find your people and move them because when the Holy Spirit gets ready, people will have to move. I thank you, Lord, for the preaching of the words of God today. Our hearts were touched. I pray, Lord, for the leadership of this church. I pray that they will not always put the crowd in mind, for the crowd is not necessarily right. The crowd was wrong in the days of Noah. The crowd were wrong around the crucifixion of Jesus. But there is always a remnant that will stand up for Christ, though the heaven fall. So I commit this church in your hands, Lord. And when the Ro the earth, the roll is called up yonder. I know that brethren from the greater Atlantic SDA will go through the gates of Zion. I don't care, Lord, which gate they go through. If it's the gate of Judah, Benjamin of Issachar, as long we, as we get over Zion to be with Jesus, we will praise his name. I commit everything into your hand, O oh Lord. And I pray that no one will walk through this door without receiving the blessing that you have in store. Because we pray in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the sweet Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen.